Thanksgiving session. And for the keynote presentation to begin with, may I humbly take the proud privilege of inviting the one on the stage, the one who is an officer of the 1993 batch of the Indian Telecom Service of Government of India, 25 years and more the experience at different levels of government. Well, there's one thing about him I always like to say that he's humble to a fault. And um, his experience, of course, Mammoth, the one who, knows, who needs absolutely no introduction. And they also say the bigger the persona of a person, the shorter should be the introduction. But allow me to say still that he is instrumental, has been instrumental to roll out the implementation of the biometric based digital identity. We all proudly know by the name of Aadhaar, the project in so many states and the UTs in India. Ladies and gentlemen, I give to you your keynote speaker. Please join me in welcoming the Deputy Director General, Government of India, Sri Sunmay. Joshi with a huge, good, enthusiastic round of applause. Shri Joshi, a very, very warm welcome to you. Kaise hai aap? <laughs> very good evening, how to you? Good evening, everyone, and all present dignitaries, eminent speakers, audience from banking fraternity and I am thankful to organizers for inviting me here to be in the midst of the stalwart of this industry and I am going to share whatever I have learned while serving the government. From government perspective we all know the objective is the antodaya that is we have to serve the poorest of the poor at the last mile this is the overall objective for which we all are working hard by using technologies and different processes. And last 10 years that we have witnessed a sea change, particularly in the banking sector. And in July 2022, Honorable Prime Minister has termed the next 10 years, that is this, this decade that is going on, as a decade that is driven by the technology. So, we have seen a lot of things and the theme of this entire conference is what next by 2034. Because we started 10 years back with the Aadhaar, digital identity and then bank accounts have been opened. Everyone is having now the bank account because of this KYC, the digital identity. I can share the story of the micro ATM when we showcased in 2011 the first micro ATM to the then US Treasury Secretary in the Machiman Nagar Islam in the Mumbai, he was amazed to see that it's not happening even in the United States that immediately we have opened the bank account and transactions started. And what we are showcasing in the banking industry, that is unbelievable. No other country has done so far in the fashion that we are demonstrating. I when I want to open a national pension saving account, it's just in a minute, account is open. Now bank account, without visiting the bank branch, account is getting opened. See, this is the power of the digital India, how we are delivering the services, and now the 13 million transaction using the QR code in a month, it's a mind blog, 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 blog link. You know, maybe many of us have seen the era where to make the payment of the electricity bill, someone in a mohalla is taking all the bills together and going, okay, okay, taking five rupees, 10 rupees per bill. But now it has come on the internet, then the mobile application, now the Bharat will pay. And maybe if, if I can imagine, maybe the time will come when I simply think that my payment should happen, it will happen. Maybe the machine can read my mind also, the way we are progressing in the technology. So whatever we are seeing, the communication is the backbone. So when we see the one Aadhaar is the foundation, now the second foundation is the now banking, this is a bank account. So bank account is not a financial inclusion, now it is a backbone. Now based on this backbone, we have to create different innovations, application, various financial product. And if I talk about the ecosystem, digital ecosystem for the digital India, 
1.4 billion digital identity, 1.2 billion mobile connection, 1 billion plus bank accounts, 900 million broadband connection, optical fiber, and more than 2 lakh gram panchayat villages and the smartphone 10 years back 98% smartphone we were importing now 99.2% we are consuming make in India that's a really great thing in the last 10 years we have achieved so and that available in only the 5000 rupees that is the last mile device otherwise whatever ecosystem you can create how to serve the last mile now in affordable mobile phone and further there are still some uncovered villages around 26,000. For that also, the project is going on where using the Make in India technology, that is the 4G technology, government is committed to provide high speed bandwidth in those villages. So idea is 5G of course, we are the uh, 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 fastest rollout we have shown in the 5G and 4G of course now everywhere. So this high speed connectivity, the entire ecosystem is placed. We have foundation ready to build a building, a skyscraper in the next 10 years in the banking industry or the financial uh, industry. Of course, DBT is happening and Aadhaar enabled payment system, everyone is aware. UPI QR code, everyone is aware. But AEPS, I will just uh, ask from the audience, if I am not having anything, can I make some transaction? No smartphone, nothing apart from this, anything. Can we make? as on date, maybe here this audience, no one has witnessed this product, but in the bank, in the village area, even it happened with me in the Mumbai itself, one day I was just walking in the evening and I have to purchase something for the next morning, some flowers, etc., from the street vendor, but no smartphone, no cash, nothing. How to make the payment? Even I can't make the payment with the UPI. But then immediately, actually I saw that yes, Aadhaar se payment hiya nikala ja sakta hai, paisa nikala ja sakta hai. And because I remember my Aadhaar number, I went straight into the shop, gave my Aadhaar number, biometric authentication, withdraw the money, that's it. So it's the power of the digital India, our ecosystem that even I am having nothing, simply remembering my Aadhaar number, I am able to do the banking transaction and I am able to withdraw the money. So, now what next? AIML, IoT, blockchain, 5G. Now using these new things, so new technology, now how to build this new era, what we can do? Now AIML, of course, banks have taken a lead and many products they are giving based on the predictive analytics and they are doing the data analytics. But what they can do further using the IML. They have to take care of the first, the data sanctity, the data quality. Data should come from the trusted source. So have a very good AI ML model. Otherwise the garbage in and garbage out. The way we train, educate our children in the formative years. If we give the bad habits, the bad human being. So if the bad data to the AI ML tool, output is bad. You can't use that output. So idea is that one has to use this AI ML models using the best quality data, trusted data, validated data. So one has to work on the data. I am again and again repeating the data because data is everywhere. Whatever technology you talk, data is everywhere. So we have to be very much concerned about the data because data can make your system interoperable. Otherwise, one system is having my name Sumnesh Joshi, other is having ST Joshi, someone is Samanesh Joshi, then it's very difficult to interact within the system. They will say, I know five Sumnesh Joshi, we don't know who is the actual Sumnesh Joshi. So one has to collect the data, so maybe single source of truth. Use the digital locker or the Aadhaar KYC for the single source of truth, so everywhere the data uh, should remain uh, the same. And now again, we have to work on some of the problems that we can solve using the technology. And uh, it's not that whatever the data we are seeing, we can't improve. Talk any taxi driver, many taxi driver in the Mumbai have come from the different states and when we ask why you, why you don't take the loan from the bank, 
sir, we don't get the loan from the bank. Why? Because all the KYC belongs to the Bihar and UP, and they are not having any document in the Mumbai. What to do? So we have to now, you know, find out where are the problems, where we can improve. So we have to find the solution. Now, in the era of the information, can't we have a system that, yes, for example, passport is, can work, Aadhaar can work from any address. And the best example, you can draw an analogy, the Aadhaar enabled public distribution system, one nation, one Russian card. A family of the five members in the Bihar, different Aadhaar numbers. One person is taking Russian in the Mumbai, one is taking the Bangalore, one is taking Delhi, remaining two are in the Bihar. All addresses are from the Bihar. So why not in the banking, maybe we can use this strong KYC and they can take the financial product anywhere across the country. They don't need to produce the document of the local where they are working. So we have to find some solution. Ultimately, we have to just uh, uh, find the validity or the trust on that person or the consumer. So information-based lending, this is another area that, yes, we have to see a lot of things. RBI Innovation Hub has already come out with the public tax frictionless credit uh, platform, but still uh, entities have to use that system and give the loan based on the information. Some of the startups uh, have started this type of low ticket loan because based on the information flow, they are seeing, okay, every day revenue of 2,000 rupees, 3,000 rupees, 5,000 rupees, so they are giving the loan. Then another thing that in the coming decade, what financial industry can do, of course, they have started doing the uh, data analytics that targeted based product. But again, still we have to go a long way. Students are applying for the education loan to the banks. Why they are applying? Can't we have a system that we know these are the best students, best colleges, and they are the need of the loan, so we can so much approach them. And the institute they are supposed studying, IITs, IIM, they have the brand value. So why collaterals are required? You know a person graduated from IIT, Mumbai, computer science can earn one crore a month or this 550 lakhs a month. So we can use all these data and we can give the loan proactively and not only the education. When they graduate, to promote the startup or the entrepreneurship, we can further approach based on their capability and the kind of uh, study they have done, kind of the uh, institute they have. So all these things, you know, you know, we have to factor in in the uh, data and do something and in the interoperability system, we can create a system. And of course, the caveat is the consent-based architecture. So without the consent, we can't do anything. So that everywhere, we have to ensure that we are taking the uh, consent. Now, one more thing that comes into my mind when I visited a lot of villages and seeing how the people are working, bankings are getting done, farmers are working. Now, in the era of the Internet of Things and the 5G, where the sensor will communicate directly with the 5G network. So lots of data will get generated. And that is very useful, maybe the health sector, agriculture sector, transport sector. So as such, there is no direct relation of the banking industry with these devices, but there is, because you are providing the loans for the health, for the farmers, for the industry, for purchasing the machines or the consumer products. So we can design a product. Okay, we are giving a loan to the farmer, but we will also help you in increasing the productivity and maybe our business correspondence or the banking person or the agriculture officer using the IoT devices will help you to level, uh, uh, measure the moisture level or if, is there any issue with the agriculture or pesticide. Or, so productivity of the farmer will increase. It's not as such banking work, but if the productivity will increase, he will earn more, he will pay the loan. And then where the money will go, he will start saving in the same bank account. So overall, banks can proactively approach those towers target segments. And as on date, also banks are doing. But where they are doing, maybe the state government, they want a float. They are approaching, okay, give me this 1,000 crore rupees, I will make your IT system free of cost. They are doing, as on date also. But why not, they will start proactively more and more. So I request all the banking fraternity, please just think out of box and help all the people who are living in the rural area, if we can make them use of technology, because see, the kind of literacy we are having, maybe they are not well versed with the technology immediately, so we have to help them, because in our country, what we have seen, it is the assisted model. 
everyone even having the smartphone financial the moment we say the financial literate is not that something uh, education so called phd persons are also financially illiterate so they are not able to handle the mobile application or maybe they are scared right so that we have to think that how we can provide the assisted mode services to the nook and corner of the country or the person who required all these type of services then we can't uh, forget the dpi where we have shown the word in the g20 summit that what we have done using the dpi right from the digital identity then the upi then account aggregator e sign bhashini a digi locker so so many dpis now we have created and now we have to reap the benefit of these dpis so system or foundation is ready so now using all these new technologies and dpi we have to serve the last mile consumer in the best fashion so they can get the best return on the investment maybe we can help that okay uh, using the iml financial planning also if someone is earning 30 40000 but still the money is idle but if some trust can be developed okay you can invest and get return of investment on this or maybe invest in the mutual fund or the share market or you require a loan this is the best loan available and in the minute you know even the rbi governor already said in the uh, last year gff the time to give the loan has to be reduced why it takes 15 days or 30 days we should have something uh, in the system itself so we can say ki okay we are very safe we have ensured the credibility of the person and we can give the loan and all this natural language processing the ocr image processing the cctv is the very primitive what i can not primitive i can say the iot device available everywhere but we have to use the footage of that the person who has entered the bank branch see the facial expression you can analyze its happy mood sad mood neutral lots of thing we can do in the branch or maybe at the bc outlet wherever cctv is there so if we use all these tools we can generate a lot of data and more insight from that data and of course the risk analysis we are doing using the iot's and data coming from the iot and then use the ai ml models and then fraud data analysis that one should ensure that so we have lots of data and of course the banks have started that may be geography wise uh, uh, particular area or particular branch where the frauds are happening why it is happening what type of geography what type of persons so we can nail it down and we can take some pre preventive uh, steps so and lastly one more i think i want to uh, request the banking fraternity again the new game changer in our country is the ondc open network digital commerce upi has come now in ondc you will see lots of thing thing will happen we want to have every person who is able to sell maybe a small amount or uh, any product maybe the art or painting or maybe the food or whatever they want to sell on the online platform but it's a very difficult for that person to on get himself on board in on dc maybe it's a easy thing but it's still the bank can further help in this and it's a win win situation because when you open a bank account for a person who makes the art and maybe de facto you can tell all your bank accounting account opening managers on board them on the on dc if he is or she is ready to sell something so if they will sell something they will earn something the money will come into in your bank account then you can further offer the more financial products so in the ondc we have to onboard as many as sellers and of course the sellers are in the financial system so banks to my mind is in the best position to onboard more and more seller on the ondc rather than maybe other way uh, we will have the strategy uh, so that may be uh, my suggestion to the industry that you can onboard uh, all these type of Uh, sellers on the on dc and lastly cyber security threats we are getting we are seeing increase in these type of activities recently so many unsolicited call phishing messages and even you know people they are so smart if you buy something today from a trusted website maybe 700 rupees next day something will be delivered at 
your home same 700 rupees and you end up by paying 700 rupees and nothing is there in the packet because actual product will come maybe two hours later. Data is leaked. So at the same address, so you are under the impression that yes, I have ordered something, it is coming, I have to pay 700 rupees, it's a very low ticket amount, but finally, because data has got leaked, it happened. Again, data is getting leaked from courier services. You are expecting a courier, you are getting a message that we attempted two or three times, you want uh, delivery of that product, kindly click this again. So the messaging is coming in such a manner that of you are thinking that yeah, it is coming from the trusted source. Yes, actually I have ordered. So bank should make a problem. Sometimes I was discussing with some of the bankers, they told that, so what we can do, because why a person is giving the OTP, it's his her headache, they should be cautious why they are sharing the OTP. See, this is a simple uh, mechanism to escape. Why not we will make the product so robust that you can say with the proud that my product is robust, no one can cheat you. Use the multi-factor authentication, maybe the face authentication, your own pin, IRAs, whatever authentication you can have, but depending upon the risk involved in the product, use those type of product, but ultimately, consumer is the king, we have to serve them, and whatever means we can do, using the technology, using the predictive analytics, all the tools available. So we have to have a robust feedback mechanism, grievance mechanism. Finally, customer is delighted. We all are delighted. You are delighted. Nation is delighted. Thank you. Thank you very much. Sri Joshi, thank you very, very much. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Thanks so much for rendering the keynote and bringing your stature in person to make sure that we do not miss on keeping in mind our imperatives when we talk about the banking industry and the financial services industry as well.